Hi everyone, how are you? Welcome again to our UbiDots Live. Today we will be talking about synthetic variables with okay. David and, uh, and uh, Agustin. <laughs> yeah. Hello, you know me. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we have been here before. Uh, it's really nice to be with you today. And as Sophie just said, uh, we're going to talk about synthetic variables, a really nice, nice future uh, already building in UbiDots functions. And so let's begin. Okay. What do you want to know about synthetic variables, guys? Remember, I'm from marketing. So the first thing I think would be good to touch is what is a synthetic variable? What's the oh. difference with a regular variable? And also, what is different functions we can have? And where can we find the list of that function? Okay, I think that's a good start. Uh, what do you think, I was in? It's a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah, a lot of questions <laughs> to begin, of course. But yeah, let's begin. So guys, uh, and Sophie, I know you're from marketing, so I think those doubts is really nice to have and well we're going to solve it right now so synthetic variables is a really nice function already building in UBIDOS as I already said uh, it's an engine uh, to transform or scale your, your raw data and give or add value to your, to your variables right uh, so for example let's say you have a temperature or that is, sent, is being sent to UBITOS in, in the grid Celsius, and you okay. want to transform it to Fahrenheit Celsius. And I'm coming with this example because it's really easy, and just to uh, bring to the table our director of operations camera that is behind the scenes. Uh, he's from the US, and he's probably more familiar with Fahrenheit degrees. So we usually have sensors here, and we transform the data from Celsius to Fahrenheit just to please camera. But just <laughs> that is just a joke. Um, and Sophie, you talk about also what can be done with synthetic variables engine uh, and the operators and the functions available. So let me show you right here. I have a well. Let me show you first our synthetic variables article. You can find it in our help center. Uh, you can. This is just an introduction. But here, if you go down. Uh, you're going to, I'm not sharing the screen, I think. Nope. nope. That's my bad. Let's share it. Now you have it. Here again, this is the analytics uh, article, uh, synthetic variables basics. And if you go uh, scroll down here to click here, then you will be redirected to our nice table we have uh, where we briefly show every functions and operators available in the synthetic variables. Okay. Uh, it's really easy. Uh, I think you're familiar from, with this. I mean, yes. it's basic operations, right? And yeah, this is the, just the beginning. Or what do you think, Sophie? Is that nice enough? Yes, that is. Okay, now I get the beginning. The beginning, so yeah. So can you show me how it works in Wheels? Yeah, that would be great. So, because everything. Agus has a question. Agus, you have a question? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, I want to help David answer uh, all the questions that Sophie asked. No, uh, no the, just a, a little bit of why this is built into UbiDots. We, we think that uh, IoT is, is yeah. too hard already, doing hardware is too hard already, and your devices have limited connectivity unlimited processing power, unlimited battery capabilities. So it is under our philosophy, it's always how can we put uh, less effort into what the devices should be doing and more effort into, well, into the cloud, basically. Okay. And your example is a typical one, uh, Fahrenheit to Celsius, and some of these operations that we will be looking at today also involve, uh, for example, a floating point uh, calculation. You know, if you divide a number, then you get decimals. And uh, most of you guys know by uh, tinkering with electronics that sometimes the management of those decimals can be a little bit tricky in the microcontroller, especially it has, if it has low resources or only 16 bits or, or the eight, eight bits. So it, under this philosophy, we said, okay, the microcontroller should be sending just a, a simple and plain yeah, measurement and then all the logic you want to build up in the cloud so 
Okay. That's why. Now I get it. <laughs> yeah, Agus, thank you for the appreciation. Uh, so, Sophie, let's continue and jump on it with a simple example. Um, okay. Here in Uvidot. Okay. Can I put you an example that is real, one of our clients? Yeah, of course. So, they need to know uh, they're a service company and they need to know how many services do they, like they do on the month. Yeah. So they want to know each time a service is made, they can put it in Ubidots or Ubidots has the information. So at the end of the month, they have the total services they did. Yeah, actually, I have a example quite similar to that. Okay. Need to share screen. I need to share a screen again. Please. I think this is something I'm missing. So let's say our customer uh, who is really uh, concerned about the services offering every month is okay. sending just a one value every time he offers a service. So here I have a variable. Uh, I have it from last night sending just a one, 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 one. And I want to record every, for example, every day, how many services uh, I am I, making to my, my clients. It works the same if you want to compute how many services uh, are you doing in, in a month. So here I have a synthetic variable, but I think I'm going to create it from scratch. So you guys see the process. Here I have uh, the add variable bottom, and it's quite simple. Then I have the synthetic variable. And here you have a pop-up window where you can enter everything uh, you want to compute. Okay. All the functions which I showed you before, or basic math operations. So let's say I want to count every service uh, available in a month, for example. So I use this function called uh, count which allow me to, I don't know what is the parenthesis here, and that's really bad. <laughs> nope. Nope. I don't know what it is. Take your time. No, I cannot take the time. There it is. Thank you, Agustin, for your help. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, so this is the function, and then I'm going to select my variable. So here I have my device called Scrapping. It's just a random um, name, and I'm going to look through uh, services. But yeah, services, and then just a comma, and then the data range I want to compute. So I told okay. you guys is uh, every month. Okay. So it's really simple, just by putting here uh, double quotes, 1D, uh, D, is for, D is for day, I think it's month, and then that's it. I just click in accept, accept, and where is my variable? I just need to look for it, there it is, new variable. So I'm going to index a new name, and let's call it services per month as the variable gets created uh, we'll need to wait just a little because okay. all the agent is computing the data all the historical data from yesterday so it's not like something simultaneously um, let me go back and let's look for our variable there you have it so if you see, uh, I have provided, or my, my customer, our customer is, have been providing 104 services over yesterday. Okay. Because this is, this is just emulated data. But if you translated this to the real, oh, yeah. be, I can tell you, you know, real cases, because only yesterday at, we, we were giving a, a presentation about uh, hardware as a service. Okay. So, it, there are a lot of cases about this. One very, very cool one that I personally uh, liked a lot is uh, there's a company that okay. uh, manufactures these machines to do uh, to to wash cars. Basically, I mean they have like a very specific way of washing cars, washing the engine. So it's a very unique thing. And but what's also unique about their is, is this bis their business model because they don't sell the machine. They install it at the workshops and the, or places where cars go. And, and and in uh, shopping malls, etc., and they charge by the services. So 
this is an essential data point for them because if there's, a, I don't know, a service that was performed and it wasn't counted, then it's very critical because at the end of the month, uh, they <coughs> automatically send an invoice to the customer based on the amount of, of wash, of, of the amount of times that a car was washed. So it's pretty cool. That's yeah. Thank you, Agus, for your appreciation. Um, I'm going to go back to our screen. And now that you have a real, a real use case, um, I mean, with actual impact on some applications, like Agustin said, uh, let's continue with some things okay. more complicated. What do you think? So yes, I mean, yeah. we receive every time things from our clients that they need to do. So I remember there was something else and it was that another company needed to know each time that the temperature of a cold storage yeah. was on the bottom, like on the limit of the minimum or on the limit of the maximum. So can I solve that with synthetic yeah, variables? Of course. Uh, okay. Synthetic variables is really nice to compute ranges of time. Okay. So here I have uh, a variable called temperature. I have it sent in data, actual data. This is actual data. Uh, from a sensor I set up yesterday in my home. Um, Are you back on the screen? Sorry? Yeah, I'm okay. back in the screen, yeah. <laughs> oh, you're saying your, your home is a bit chilly. Yeah, <laughs> I have a, an, an air conditioner, so, and my mom also likes it like that. So here I have actual data, um, and I'm going to show you something I did real quick. Okay. This is just a, going back to our initial case. I was transforming from Celsius degrees to degrees Fahrenheit just by putting this equation. It's that easy. And now going back forward to our example of actually measuring how much time this temperature has reached or have, has been above certain value. I already uh, coded, sort, sort of to say, here in a variable called time one. I'm going to explain you. This is a little bit um, more difficult. This is not the variable. <laughs> it's called time one. Yeah. Okay. So here I have a condition and a function, and I'm I'm exploding all of Uido's synthetic variable engine. So first we have here where there is a conditional function to compute or operate on conditionals. So okay. for example, here first I have uh, our te my temperature. If, if the condition is, or the temperature is, is above or equals to 16.5, and then I make an AND statement. And the second function I have here is shift. Shift, we use it to retrieve the previous value to the last. Okay. So actually, the, how do you say that in English? I was previous value. Previous value, <laughs> yeah, it's right. So let's just scroll to the right, to the right, and here I have it. Shift uh, the minus one here is just to say the previous value, okay. and I have it here um, less than less than 16.5. So this is a condition where you can imagine I'm just setting a point, and I want the timestamp here okay. is what I'm going to retrieve. That is the important value. Once I get to that point and I, I and I have certain conditions, last value is less than my limit and the actual value is greater or equals, then I have the timestamp, right? Okay. That's what I'm recording in milliseconds because we work in milliseconds. Yeah. That's why those big numbers. Then I need another timestamp to record when the temperatures goes down that, that limit I set up. Remember guys, our limit is uh, 16.5. Okay. So I guess this is time two, and it's a really similar expression. I'm not going to take so much time here. I just change something really, really, really little. So temperature, uh, I change the condition here. Is now It is not greater than, but okay. less than. Shift function is the same. The only thing is the condition I'm changing. Uh, here I have uh, greater than. So there is a point uh, 
that is in indicating me that the temperature now is below our limit. And here again, I have our time sum, right? Okay. So far, so good? So far, so good. Anything? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so we have two variables, each uh, with a condition uh, recording the timestamps. Yeah, exactly. Whenever that condition was true. Is, yeah, that's exactly right. And we're recording the timestamp where those conditions were met. And you want to subtract them now? Yeah, okay. exactly that. I want to subscribe, subtract them, and then I'm going to have the time difference between each event so I can know how much time the variable was above 16.5. Mm. And, and I have it here in a variable called time differences. No, time difference, no. Time above 16.5. It okay. cannot be much clearer. Mm. And this is actually easy. Our synthetic variable editor allows you to name variables. So for example here, I'm naming x variable to v another function from our, the ones I showed you before, is called field missing. So let me okay. just take a little time here and explain you this because it's a really nice function and it's nice to have it uh, well explained. Field missing help us to compute data that doesn't have the same timestamp. So if you see here, uh, I have time time one. Okay. Um, let me please just go here and enter. Yeah. Then you can see all of the expression. Can I see guys what I'm hearing? Yeah. So field missing is going to compute the subtraction between time two and time one. But as you know, every time we add those timestamps, uh, they are different. So our synthetic variable cannot handle different timestamps. Field missing just uh, fills those gaps with the last value. So here I have time two uh, minus time one. And since I told you guys at the beginning, we are computing that timestamps in milliseconds, then I'm here transforming it to dividing by a thousand and then by 60. Sorry guys, that was my mistake. And there you have it. No, that's T. Yeah. Um, by 62, convert our subtraction to minutes. Here, uh, I name a variable called T diff that is meant to be T time time difference, and I again here use the function where. I need this to really be uh, completely sure about the difference being positive because otherwise I can have cases where I'm going to have time difference negative. Okay. And I'm always interested in, in the positive one. And at the end of this, I just put our variable, our important variable that is tdiff. I'm going to cancel here and show you the results. That is why we're here. So for example, I've been having do you have a question? <laughs> yeah, of course. That's the idea. What are some typical uh, use cases uh, for, for this specific uh, setup of time differences? Well, for example, uh, some days ago, or I think last week, a client reached to me saying that he wanted to know uh, outage times from his devices. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I want to read last value. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, retrieve the timestamp and if the device stops uh, sending data once it sends again mm -hmm. then I have I, I can take that timestamp again mm -hmm. and compute the difference okay. so I know in a variable and I can record in a variable the time the, the time where the device was okay. out of connection okay. or not sending data and that's really important for users to uh, ensure the, the application okay no oh, which reminds me for example, in the industrial use cases, the machines, yeah. they, they love to measure, I mean, the industry 4.0 clients, they love to measure machine uptime and availability. And that's uh, basically dividing the time it was uh, operating by the total amount of the, the shift, of the working shift. And that gives a, a percentage. So using this, they, they should be able to do have a percentage uptime of, of a machine. Yeah, a percentage. Of 
availability of a process. Yeah, there are a lot of uh, applications and it's up to you guys to come up with ideas and reach to us and say, hey, mm -hmm. can I use Synthetic Variables Engine to do this? And it's almost certain it can be done. Um, do you have any yeah. questions, Sophie? Uh, until now, I don't have a question. I had another case that comes to my mind that yep. we had a few weeks ago, and it was a company or a guy that needed to know for his business how much time the injector was working during the month. Yeah, exactly. We are back to... I mean, if you have something similar to explain me, it would be great. Well, let me see if I have something prepared similar to that. Um, so actually I'm just working with temperature, but we could do it with services, our variable, our service variable. Okay. So you set out customer have a, an injection machine and I guess it sends a one, it sends mm -hmm. a one every time it, it it's, working. it's working or injecting or mm -hmm. doing his work. So I could compute um, the time between injections. That would, be, that would be good yeah, to do. Yeah, it would be good. Yeah, yeah that's really what similar to this. I just have to record the timestamps from this service that I think I have it already here. Yeah. Um, yeah, it would be the, the time difference of the previous example you showed. I think I don't have it prepared. Do you think? Yeah, this is the time differences. Time differences. Yeah. Yeah, for example. Yeah, this okay. would be a similar case. A similar case, so yeah. Where Let's say you have a you manage a business where you lease machines, and then you have these machines out of, out in the fields, okay. and you want to know for maintenance purposes, you want to know um, when to to change the oil or when to do a preventive maintenance. Okay. So you want to count the amount of hours that the machine has been working, okay. so that you can pass this number to to the maintenance guys and say, okay. It's just like a car, you know, after 5,000 miles, I have to do this, after 10,000 miles, I have to do that. And these tools and these expressions, just as David pointed out, uh, are examples of how this can be achieved without necessarily having tons of lines of code. Um, that's exactly what, what an example of, of synthetic expression use case. Cool, okay. and. That's everything I remember from real cases. Do you have anything else you want to share about synthetic variables? Any of you? Uh, well, every some some businesses have very specific functions. So we, we gave one for temperature uh, Fahrenheit to Celsius. Yeah. But sometimes we've seen uh, customers that they, for example, they have a uh, measurement of a variable that is related to the output that they want to have and there's a model in between and that model is not, not linear it's like a very specific equation that they came up with in the lab and then they just put this equation into the synthetic expression and all of a sudden they have the you know wh what they need uh, another one is money so you want to at the end if you have these services you want to multiply it by the amount you want to charge so suddenly you, you go from having a dashboard that counts amount of services to having a management dashboard that shows the like the actual invoices that you will be generated to the end clients. So that's also a, a typical case. Well, now that you're talking mm -hmm. about money, uh, mm -hmm. I remember I have mm -hmm. another variable here um, called, or I'm scrapping the data from Bitcoin value and I will go back a little bit uh, to show you some functions mm -hmm. really yeah. nice that add value to our to, to your application. Uh, so I have here the Bitcoin price every five minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I would like to show you, uh, for example, I have our the mean value of the Bitcoin price. Okay. Uh, yeah, the average uh, every day. So I showed you before some functions, uh, data range functions. Uh, the first one was count, to count every service, every dot coming to Ubi dots. But you can also perform here uh, the mean value. And, okay. it's, and, and the syntax is really similar. Mm -hmm. I just want to point that. Uh, the function is called mean. And as the previous example, uh, you enter your variable, in this case, the Bitcoin price. 
and you put your data range. I put it daily, right? Um, I'm going to go back and show you the values. I mean, this is really simple. Um, one thing is really nice about synthetic variables is that when you start computing, it also computes all the historical data. It's not mm -hmm. something like you start from here and then you start computing. No, okay. It takes all your data set and computes mm -hmm. the variable. Okay. What happens if I have a sensor device and I cal recalibrate it for whatever purpose and then I, I realize that I have to change my synthetic expression to reflect whatever uh, recalibration was oh. made? Uh, then you have to sort of recompute that, or because what do you think we do a recalibration about with the Fahrenheit Celsius? Yep. Uh, syntax variable. So this is actually possible. It's just something about changing your expression, save it, and recompute your historical data. Mm -hmm. So let's do that. Um, let's see. I have my synthetic variable here, the temperature. I'm going uh, to edit it. Yeah, let, let's say we want to add an, an offset of two degrees more because, you know, the sensor... Because we realize the sensor needed. Yeah, because we yeah. realize... The, yeah. So just have... So let's say here plus... Or where I am. Okay. Yeah. Plus two. Okay. Plus two. And then I click on accept. But uh, the thing here is the variable just gets his its expression uh, updated. Okay. We here have a button called Compute Historical Data. Okay. Right? Okay. okay. Yeah. And here we have a calendar that allows you to select when you, when you want to start uh, computing your data again. Oh, cool. Yeah, from the beginning. Okay. Let's do so one day. Yeah, one day. Because uh, this data is coming from, yeah, yesterday. Where is that? Can you see? 27? 26, actually. It wasn't 27. Okay. Okay. So, of course, it's taking a little bit because it's computing all the data. Yeah, that's an, uh, yeah it's, it's, it's uh, asynchronous. So yeah, it's, it's asynchronous it's process. Like a background process. Yeah, of oh, course. Cool. So if we wait a little bit, um, we can talk anything else and go back mm -hmm. when the results are here. Okay, I think it's already increased. Yeah. Guys, remember if you have any yeah. questions, just let us know. Yeah, maybe we could we could do it again with a bigger example because something like ten. Okay, I mean, if if, any, if this, do we have any questions. Yeah, we have actually one question. Um, someone was asking me just if we have a page with the cases we are talking of the syntax, something mm -hmm. like use cases expressions for synthetic engine. Yeah, so we, we said that at the very beginning, but uh, maybe yeah, please. for, for the, those users who, who have joined a little bit after, uh, let's let's just go again through the yeah. uh, help center article and the work to find that information. Please. Of course. Just let me go back to uh, the help center. Yeah. And um, the functions. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah, just click here. Uh, yeah. So, do you want to explain again a little? Yeah, of faster. course. Sorry. A little faster. Yeah. Um, here you have all the functions available in the synthetic variables. Uh, I don't want to be specific on each one. Uh, you can go and read all of them, but just to give you some example, here we have some basics about sale, that it will approximate any number to the closest and bigger integer. Uh, same with floor or round, it's, it's pretty straightforward. We have trigonometrics, um, we have mathematics and the data range functions. As I told you before, these are really special and add value to, to your data because you can compute maximum values over a time range, minimum, averages uh, or count, last value um, and so on. And here are the data ranges available. So you can pick from uh, minutes, then hours, 
uh, days, weeks, or months. And finally, the special functions, we call it like that, is the work the where function where you can compute conditional expressions, fill missing, which fill all the gaps on your data sets, and shift to retrieve pass values. Okay, so the person that was asking just told me that is not the functions what he needs like he, what he's asking. Mm -hmm. He's asking if we have a, a place where they can find the case studies. I think we Oh I see some some examples yes. like published. Okay, I, I don't think we have that yet, but, but we can it's a, work it's a, on it. Yeah, we can work on that. It's a really nice idea. Uh, like a article, help 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 center article showing examples and real use cases. Do you think I've seen that's possible? Yeah. Okay, so that's all the questions I have. Do any of you want to add anything else? Oh, I. Okay. Yes. No, that's it. Okay. Oh, uh, well, we can, I think that's all for me, from my side. Um, I want to thank David yeah. for, for all the examples. Um, we, we should yeah. switch back to, to the screen. I think I just want to add a comment. Uh, okay. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. And if you have any doubts or you want a, a specifics mm -hmm. or you need support um, creating your synthetic variable, to target your specific application, please let us know and we are here to support you uh, and help you out with the synthetic variables or anything else about UI dots and application development in the IoT world. Yeah, also besides doing these Facebook Lives that we have seen that are really helpful for you guys, Remember that we have a YouTube channel that is called Widots Academy, where you can find information about our platform and other IoT cases. And then we also have our blog, when mm -hmm. there's a few people that collaborate with us and do really cool IoT projects. So thank you guys again for connecting. And see you in two weeks. Yeah, yeah. see you in two weeks. Bye. Bye. Bye.